Hi everyone, my name is David. Welcome back to the channel. And we are into the final stages of the Terminator Genesis Slow Grow Force Creation Challenge. All we've got to do is some character miniatures. Skynet's up first, so let's get on to it. Unlike the last time, there are not that many figures to do for this month. Yay! But I am going to be doing a couple. Um, first one is this little fella. This is a T-1000. Um, he is one of the official miniatures from the game. So he definitely needs to be done. But we have been going on about how miniature agnostic the game is now because it's out of print. So, for another T-1000, I am going to be using these. Now these are Project Z female survivor sprues because there's nothing saying that your Terminator has to be male. In fact, we've had a few female ones. So I'm going to do another T-1000 using these. One hidden before she's revealed in the game and one after she's taken some damage and shown a close. So here's a quick photo to outline where I'm up to so far. Obviously the T-1000 that came from the miniatures game itself has already been assembled. Now one thing to note is you can tell a T-1000 basically by the fact that it's already been transformed. It's got that sword that's come out of its arm and you can see a few sort of bullet holes where it's deformed the metal and of course if you've seen the movie that's all going to meld back together. I've also got the actual resistance miniature done that the T-1000 is going to transform into and I have started on the transformed miniature itself. Now I've done a pose change to the actual miniature itself and dropped that rocket launcher T-1000 with a rocket launcher, gotta love it. And I have also started adding in some of those bullet holes. Now that was done with the heated point of a metal sculpting tool, as you've seen me do in other miniatures. And I've left some as they are, but I also used those melted holes as a pilot hole for a larger drill bit. And now what we're going to do is a little bit of sculpting with some polymer clay just to get that miniature finished off. Now, this is a fresh pack of Milliput. I prefer to use this over green stuff and I prefer to use the uh, super fine white basically because white is a, a, a far better colour to you know paint over the top of just to start off with but I also prefer to have a slightly quicker hardening time than you get with green stuff. Now it's a two part clay I'll just get some out of the packet like this and you want round about the same amount for each remember because you are adding it together it is going to double up in volume and I'll start needing that together and that should be absolutely ample for our needs. Now what we are going to do first of all on those larger bullet holes I'm going to add a little bit of definition by uh, sort of putting the the deformed ring around them but also on the weapon arm and this is the weapon arm here hopefully you can see this this is the arm that well is going to be in place of the sword arm that comes on the other t-1000 and that has been donated from the army of the world hide and seek record holder king richard the third so it's got a pike head on there and the arm has been donated by a pikeman and i've shaved it down a little bit but we do need to add a little bit in the way of clothes molding to the top and just a little bit of clay just to to blend that pike in with the rest of the arm so that should be round about mixed by now get a small amount get that tamped down into the hole there, work it up as a rim and then just smooth it down into the miniature just to get it to it here nicely and the next piece okay that's the body done wrap a wee bit around 
empty. And then just using a wet tool, just smooth it all the way through that joint. Remove any cat hair from your clay. Thanks guys. Now, just to match up, I want a very thin piece because this is going to be sort of the sleeve of the t-shirt and it kind of goes like that and around put that up there like that and then I'll use just a couple of these strips just laid in place like that come on, off you come and then smooth down just to give sort of wrinkles in the clothing just like that and then the very last piece I actually left on the sprue because it was going to be easier to sculpt on there and that is the head which again has a boat hole in it so we'll get some clay in there get on Tap that down nicely. So I can now get these or this final one glued together and I'll get them all based and off for an undercoat. Okay so the milliput is all dry and I've got everything assembled and based and ready to go off for an undercoat. You may be wondering why I've suddenly gone from three miniatures up to four. Well this is a Kyle Reese miniature and he's in his uh, future resistance battle dress so I'll get a head start on the next lot that I've got to do by doing him at the same time because obviously these other ones are going to be in resistance uniform as well. I am not going to show you painting those ones if you want to see me painting resistance fighters then check out this video up here. I will however check in just before I do the last little bit of silver that gets these guys differentiated from humans. Back in a bit. A little bit of a change of scenery because the uh, wife is using the main craft table for a sewing project. So I am using a backup coffee table. Um, but we are almost at the closing stages. So we've got um, four miniatures. This one is Kyle Reese. Uh, he is going to be one of the leaders that's used for the next challenge, so I'll put him to one side. We've got the T-1000 from the game, and he is just waiting on his silver parts. And we've got two versions of a T-1000. This one has been painted and is complete, and that is the undetected version. That to one side. And the one that is transformed and got bullet holes in is waiting on silver as well. So, let us get on with that. And it is three coats just to pick out those silver areas. First one is a dull silver. And I'm just going over all of the bits that are going to be metal with this and a little bit up onto the arms as well just to show that it is transforming and then the same just in all of those bullet holes just to pick them out so that we know exactly what it is already starting to look like it do the same on this chap now after this stage just having a look at it you could probably leave it at that and just let the um, metallic paint and its sort of natural reflectiveness do the rest because I'll be perfectly honest that's not looking too bad that's looking far better than I uh, than I had imagined and that's just with one coat but because it was the height of special effects back when it was done we will take just a little bit more care and give it a little bit in the way of highlighting second coat is mithril silver so this is lighter and 
we're just going to use this to highlight some of those sort of flashier areas. Definitely get it on the point there. And then we'll do a highlight around the top corner and a bottom area just for the way the light is catching it. And then the very, very last. We are just going to pick out a few bright spots with white just to get that glint. All done. And that, dear friends, is the completion, well, at least for Skynet, of the Terminator Genesis Slow Grow Challenge. We've still got the resistance leaders to do, and one down, there's three more of them to do. I'll get on to them in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Please do, if you've enjoyed this, hit the like and subscribe button. It all helps get the word round, and especially about this game, because it is a good one. Until next time. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you then. Bye now.